We're back here on the Trading Post for this Wednesday as it's time for our monthly visit with Brian Johnson from the Fulton County Community Foundation. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Randy. How are you? I, I'm great. It was a lovely walk over well, this morning say, on this uh, fall day. No sun today. No a little, sun today. A little cloudy. But yeah, and I think the saying goes, red in the morn, sailors forewarned. Yeah, so I think we could is. use some rain. We could. I, I ran rain into dance. it a, a little bit last night coming home. Yeah. It was about yeah. a... Maybe a mile stretch on yeah. 31, but it didn't uh, produce. I think much. that was just a teaser. Yeah, enough to make it mm -hmm. wet, but not really. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Maybe rain. as I you know, ran the car through the car yeah. wash, now I got it dirty <laughs> again. So. <laughs> Uh, anyways. anyway, what's happening at the Community Foundation? Well, we've got a lot of things going on right now. I'm going to give a reminder about a few things that we have going on. Um, the first is we've been talking about our match that we have through Lily Endowment. We're very appreciative mm -hmm. of that. Um, if you remember from previous months, our goal is to raise $375,000 in gifts to community funds. Those community funds are ones that donors give with no restrictions and say use them for current needs so when you look around the community you see a lot of things that have happened because of those so our goal three hundred seventy five thousand um, dollars Lily endowment matches that with seven hundred fifty thousand dollars and we have an additional fifty to sixty thousand dollars every year that we're able to give out so um, really exciting to see that so some math here we'll see how quick you are with math uh, I'm not quick with three hundred seventy five thousand okay. dollars is our goal yes We've raised over two hundred and seventy-eight thousand dollars. So math, we're over halfway there. Yes, yeah, definitely over halfway. And we're less than a hundred thousand dollars left to meet our goal. Of course, if we go over that, that just means we get more money that mm -hmm. we can give out and help good projects. But um, very exciting to see this. We have through the end of twenty twenty-five or whenever our goal is met. Wow. Absolutely. So I tell people, if you want to participate in this, probably should do it before the end of this year. Um, but I'm, I'm going to guess, yeah, because things get uh, picking up here in the next few months yeah. with, with uh, donations. Well, so. it's it's already started happening, yeah. so and we're, we're seeing some of that um, happening, and I'm very appreciative of everybody that supported this. It's really great when we look around and we see the, the way that these funds have been able to impact our community. Um, it's pretty awesome, so very appreciative to the donors, to Lilly Endowment, um, and to all the organizations that use these dollars to make Fulton County a really cool place to be so um, if you want to get in on that match probably should do it sooner yeah. rather than later so um, something kind of related to that we have this day called Giving Tuesday yeah that's coming the calendar up. is a little weird this year yeah Thanksgiving is the very last day it actually could be <laughs> so Giving Tuesday actually happens in December this year Ooh. so December 3rd mark your calendars um, we'll be at our office um, from 10 a.m. to 5.30 that day. It's a really great day of celebrating um, what we've done over the past year, um, seeing some of the impacts. Um, I don't, we probably haven't talked details, but I think WROI might be there. There's We're probably a big it. chance of it. So <laughs> listen, listen to WROI that day. Um, lunch, if WROI isn't a big enough draw, <laughs> lunch is. Um, we'll have, have a great lunch from 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. Um, we'll have some information about what we've done over the past year, kind of a, a year in review, and just come out and have lunch with us. Um, it's our time where we can say thank you to the donors that have made all the stuff that we talk about possible. So um, December 3rd, mark your calendars for that. We'll love to look forward to having everybody join us and celebrate some of those great things that yeah. have happened over the past year. Yeah, we'll look forward to being there and talking to some of the uh, recipients yeah. of uh, the awards. Awards and grants and yeah. funds and, and all those things. And we've, we've got, I do want to give a shout out, we have um, four board members that have served 12 years wow. that we're going to be celebrating that awesome. day as well. So stay tuned to hear who those people yeah. are. Um, but it's, it's really awesome when we have people that are involved and committed um, like that. So appreciate their mm -hmm. service as well. So Giving Tuesday, December 3rd. Mark that on your calendar. Out. Come sometime between 11 and 2. There have you a go. good lunch. A great lunch. A great lunch. Not a good lunch. That's a great it's lunch. It's a great lunch. It's always a great lunch. So, um, It is October. It is. So we think about end of the year. Mm -hmm. um, it's a time when people often think about those year-end gifts like you just mentioned so 
Um, one thing I plug is we have a lot of folks that's been very popular for IRA charitable rollovers. Mm -hmm. um, something where once you reach a specific age, you have to take a required distribution from an IRA if you have a You and I haven't IRA. reached that age. We haven't yet. reached that no. age quite yet. No, not so, quite yet. But someday we'll get there, <laughs> hopefully. Um, but a lot of people will say, well, you know what, I have to take this, but I don't really want it. It might affect me negatively. Um, there are some, some laws that are in place that allow folks to roll that over directly to a charitable organization. Um, the community foundation being one of those and a lot of times there's um, some significant advantages for tax um, planning purposes mm -hmm. that can happen because of that and that rollover can also fulfill that required minimum distribution so um, i always encourage folks if you have an ira and you have to take a distribution and you don't need that think about something local whether it be the foundation an organization you're involved with um, some way that you can make an impact in the community so a really neat way to do that. Um, a couple, today is just kind of some random thoughts that I've had. We'll talk oh, about some grants. It could be scary. It could be scary, <laughs> but um, it's been interesting. A couple of questions that I've been asked mm -hmm. over the last um, couple of weeks were, are where these thoughts came from. Um, I had, a, had an individual in my office and we were talking about the Community Foundation and, and the question was asked, well, why the Community Foundation? there's a lot of different options out there mm -hmm. um, so I figured let's talk about some of the some of the things the foundation were not were not always the right place but you mean your, a answer, lot of, your answer wasn't why not well that could be <laughs> why not um, but I'd like to I'd like to think you know if somebody comes in and we aren't a good fit mm -hmm. right. we'll point them in the direction that 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 is a good fit for them but some of the things about why the foundation um, it's really local and when Lilly Endowment create, helped create community foundations, um, one of their goals was to have local people involved um, so that when we sit down and we talk about these community funds that donors have given to, and we talk about all these projects, you know, there's great projects everywhere, but sometimes we have limited funds. I've been saying for the last few years, you know what, we're going to spend all of our community fund dollars, and we've We've worked it out the last few years where I don't know that we've had to say no to any projects that we no. felt were really, really important or have been able to move them to different years. Um, but this year I kind of anticipate, you know, we may not have quite enough to fund everything that, that we want to this year. That doesn't mean organizations stop applying for grants because yeah. we always like to hear about it. We always like to try and help if we can. Right. Um, but local people make the decision so we can say, you know what, this project is good, but this project, this other project is really crucial for our community. So those local folks involved in um, these decision-making processes are, are a significant part of what makes the process go. We'll talk about our Ambassadors Club grants here in a minute and one thing we task that group with is there's no application. We want folks from that group to walk in the door and have an idea for a project. Mm -hmm. um, and well, so some, some of that too is also timing it of, is. of, of, yes. of said yes. uh, applications and stuff. It's something yeah. maybe like you said mentioned earlier yeah. Push back till next year, and, yes. and, and this one is crucial to go now. Yes, or or sometimes it's about the the size or other factors mm -hmm. locally that that make an impact. So, um, to have local people and say, you know what, it's important right now. Yeah. This is this is life or death. Um, I don't say that lightly because one of the projects we've been able to help fund over the past few years is the Compassionate Health Center. Yeah. Um, I remember before the Compassionate Health Center was around and. That organization literally is life or death for some of the clients that, is. that are there. So important projects like that. Um, and the other thing is local projects. You know, these are funds that are used in Fulton County. So we don't have to compete with surrounding counties. You hear about state programs and, well, there's 92 counties in <laughs> Indiana. So if there's a state initiative, we're very appreciative when yeah. we're able to participate in those. But um, one of the things that happens with community foundations is we capture these dollars to ensure that they're used for local needs. Yeah. So when I walk out the door here at the radio station, I'm going to walk past two or three projects that are local that our funds are able to help support. So it's really neat to, 
to see how those two things, um, local people and local projects are impacted and it's, it's capturing those dollars for the future. Um, so real world example, the, we, we talk about endowment funds mm -hmm. and I always try to define that whenever I say an endowment fund. So an endowment fund is donors make a gift, that gift is invested and then those earnings are used to create um, grants every year. So these community funds that are given today, 20 years down the road, are still going to be giving back to right. the community because of an endowment fund is invested, it creates earnings, those earnings are what go back to that project. And we always say, well, theoretically, you know, you hear those disclaimers at the end of commercial past performance is <laughs> indicative of future results, so I should probably have a disclaimer like that. But um, I can say theoretically, or I can look back and say, you know what, this is a real world example of this. So one that I love to look at um, because this has gone through this process. Um, Charles and Elizabeth Babcock, um, they were in the community long before I was ever yeah. here. I never had the opportunity to meet them, but had created a fund that helped local scholarships. Um, and that fund was actually transferred to the community foundation from an organization um, that was managing it that said, you know what, you are a better manager of this than we are because you are local, you are you have more input on needs in the community. So um, the fund was moved to the community foundation in 1996. So important number to remember here, the initial gift was about $600,000, pretty good size yeah. dollar amount. Um, so over those years, if you look at the way an endowment fund works, after about 20 to 25 years, an endowment fund pays out what the initial gift was, plus ideally it's grown right. a little bit to keep up with inflation, spending power, and it continues to make grants. So 1996, $600,000. Looking at the dollars today, so the total fund balance right now is $855,000, grown a little bit. An even cooler number, total scholarships given out since 96 when the fund came to us, almost $760,000. Wow. So that $600,000 has given out over three quarters of a million dollars in scholarship funds. And oh, by the way, 2024, give out about another $35,000 to local students. Um, so we talk about the local impact. Um, one of the things I said was local people. So the Babcock Scholarship, you know, 1996, if I walked in the door of a high school and said, I want to take a dual credit class, I'd probably get a sideways look and say, you know what, that's not something we offer or have ever really dealt with. Um, but one thing that happened is it's awesome now that high school students can take college classes, get credit for them, be cheaper. Um, the Babcocks had never heard of a dual credit class. Um, something that happened with, because of local people, there were a number of folks that said, you know what, we have some students that can't afford to take these classes in high school even though it's much cheaper. Um, can we ask the court, this is a process through courts in the state of Indiana and the Attorney General, um, to change this so that now this can support some of those dual credit classes. Oh, wow. So really neat, when, and that, that all started because of local people saying, hey, we have a need here. Local people that administered these funds said, you know what, that sounds like a good idea. Let's let's see if this is acceptable to the legal community and get permission for that and now it's pretty cool to see how this is not only supporting rochester high school graduates but also soon to be rochester high school graduates so um, just kind of a neat example of you know you think that six hundred thousand dollars turned into three quarters of a million in scholarships and the fund has grown and it's still giving out today yeah. to students so really neat to see how that goes that's awesome so, talking about some grants. Mm -hmm. We love talking about women, grants. Women's Giving Circle, we talked about that last month mm -hmm. on the program and we knew who the finalists were. We didn't know who the dollar amounts were, but um, this year the group gave out $10,000 in grants to five organizations. Um, another cool number, since 2011, the group has given out $99,500 in grants. 
Wow. So that means I can do math. Yes. Next year it'll be over a hundred thousand dollars. I can do simple math. It's simple math. I keep it simple here. So, so the recipients this year um, receiving a thousand dollars each nickel <coughs> plate trail. Um, they wanted to be able to provide a longer time frame for some portage ons uh, on the trail. Um, the trail, pretty cool part of actually a national trail if you follow it long enough. Um, and so an awesome resource in our community. The Fulton County Parks Department, um, they've been working on some new trails out at Richland Restoration Nature Park. If you haven't been out there recently, go out and check out the posts with numbers on them. They have arrows that point you to some cool walking trails. Um, receiving a $2,000 was Grace Mom Co., a group, um, a, a support group for local moms. A really awesome program that provides some resources, um, some gathering, and just some fun times as well for moms. So if you're, if you are a mom, check out mm -hmm. Mom Co. $2,500 to the Rochester Junior Senior High Band. Um, this is for some instrument repairs. Um, they had a really awesome video that had some sad instruments in it that uh. could be put back into use. <laughs> um, but they've, they've seen a huge growth in this. So um, really cool to, to see how this program has blossomed over the last few months. And then $3,500 going to United Ministries, um, a group that helps so many folks that have fallen on hard times, um, some short-term financial assistance, um, helping out with some, some living expenses. So really cool to, to see those. So thank you to all the members um, that make these grants possible. The membership dues are $120 a year. Sorry, Randy, you and I are not, no, qualified, we're not qualified to be part of this group. Um, but. Um, that $120 turns into half of it goes into our endowment fund and the endowment fund has really started helping this group be able to give out more dollars and then half of it is used for immediate grants in the community so um, when you think about 60 or 70 members given $120 each and that turning into $10,000 in grants pretty cool to see how that happens it is cool. so, congratulations to all the recipients um, we appreciate the, the great things you're doing in our community, and thank you to the members. If you're curious about that group, if you want to be a member, um, check out our website. We've got a page dedicated to that on Fulton County, so NICF.org is our website. You can click on the Fulton County link and find Women's Giving Circle. So, Also talking about grants, we have a group that we call the Ambassadors Club. Mm -hmm. These are former board members that get together on a regular basis. and just they they like to give money away <laughs> organizations like to receive yeah, money yeah. so pretty cool to to see this so they met at the start of this month um, we tasked them and say you know what? come in with ideas where do you want to spend this money who's doing something good in this community um, there's no application process so don't go to our website and look for ambassadors <laughs> club grants because there is nothing there but um, again going back to those local people that live in the community and say we see a need here. Right. So um, they got together, gave out six $1,000 each grants awesome. to organizations. So um, those recipients, um, a program called Hope for the Homeless. Virgis Smith, an amazing human being, um, has been partnering with a couple of different organizations, initially Fulton County Hope and now um, Lighted Pathways, um, our local housing organization um, to help folks obtain permanent housing you know if you're living paycheck to paycheck you may not have the money for first month and last month and deposit for an apartment um, but you can keep up with it if, you, if you're able to get into it so that she's been using um, local donations to help get folks in that a more permanent situation a rental apartment um, things like that and really done amazing work with families um, to be able to help support some folks that maybe have just fallen on hard times and need a little bit of help getting caught back up. Um, another one that we mentioned during Women's Giving Circle, they, they provided some support to the Rochester High School and Junior High Band Program, some equipment repair. Rumor has it they could use more instruments, so if you've got any of those in your basement that you want to get rid of or share or loan, um, there's some needs there. So, 
Um, another local program that's been going on for a while and it has a little bit different name now, but Fulton County, Indiana 529. Mm. Makes sense that it helps folks create 529 savings account. If you're not familiar with that, what that is, is that is a account that um, allows families to save for educational expenses. So college, if somebody's going to a trade school, maybe doing a certificate program, wanting to get involved um, in education, um, those 529 accounts have some significant advantages for saving. You can create that now. Um, me and my wife have created that for both of our boys for whatever they decide to do educationally. Um, but it's, it's really flexible. There's some really good tax advantages to that as well. So um, check that out if, if you're a parent listening or grandparents. Pretty popular to help support this. But um, a program that helps encourage families and helps support families in that process because a lot of times people say, what's well, a 529 account? Well, we can tell you about this. We can help you get started with this. Um, it also provides um, through the through a couple of our local schools some matching opportunities. So cool program there. Another one, a name synonymous with our community, the Rochester Royals. Oh yes, swimming a uh, swimming program. Of course, the middle school pool is not available mm. right now. There's no water in it. No, there's no. It makes water. it hard to swim. Yeah. There's no water. Very, very hard. Probably shouldn't do a cannonball or something like that. In the pool. Um, but they've, they've had some extra challenges, been able to partner with area schools to um, help continue their season this year. Um, so they, we were able to support that program. Another one that we mentioned during the uh, Women's Giving Circle, United Ministries, mm -hmm. um, the group said, you know what, the need is, is so significant. Um, United Ministries also administers Salvation Army funds. and. Um, that those those funds were used up and so they're looking to help some folks with some short-term needs so thank you to all the folks at United Ministries that yes. help people when they're just having a having a bad time and um, provide some assistance and then another one um, Woodlawn Health um, they're doing a car seat program to help families identify if they have a safe car seat you know fortunately our boys are out of that car seat age. I told somebody a couple weeks ago, one of the greatest reliefs was one of my children are old enough that they could buckle their own seat. <laughs> As a parent, you have no idea how exciting little things like that are. But um, it, So Woodlawn Health is, is helping, um, actually gonna be doing an event, um, some of those details, November 1st at Woodlawn Health um, at the visitor entrance from four to six. Um, sounds like they're going to have some fun activities there, but also being able to do some car seat checks. And if they identify families that have car seats that may not fit the vehicle or may um, need something a little bit different, um, they'll have some resources there as well to be able to um, provide um, possibly the car seats for families. So pretty cool when we look at those organizations. And, and those are all as a result of conversations of local people that live here that say, I see a need, we can help with this need, and we're going to do something about this need. So um, really cool to see that. So congratulations to all those organizations that received Women's Giving Circle grants and Ambassador Club grants. We appreciate what you do for our community and, and make it a great place to be. So, well, as we wrap up, um, talking just grants, giving money out, the sun talk, comes it, out. It yeah. is. The it's sun comes out. I mean, it's, a, it's a great time. So I'd say it's a beautiful day yeah, in the neighborhood. It is. Quote a famous American. <laughs> Some of the things we talked about today, um, of course, we have the Lilly Endowment matching opportunity. Um, all gifts to community funds are matched two for one through Lilly Endowment. Thank you to all the donors who have participated in that. Thank you to Lilly Endowment for um, supplying those funds. Um, Giving Tuesday, coming up December 3rd, mark calendars, mm -hmm. come in, have lunch with us, have a good time. Um, end of year, time to think about those gifts that may help reduce your tax burden. I always say talk with your tax planner, your tax professional, your financial advisor. They can, they can share some of those details as well. So, but if somebody's listening and is interested in finding out more about the foundation or has a question about something we talked about, looking for grants, 
wants to make a donation, just wants to know about some things that are going on in the community, don't hesitate to give us a call, 574-224-3223. You can check us out online. We're on Facebook, Northern Indiana Community Foundation, or our website, nicf.org, or we always love to have people stop in the office, 227 East 9th Street here in Rochester, and just chat about any questions, ideas, or dreams you have for our community. All right, thank you very much for coming in. We'll look forward to talking to you uh, next month again, and uh, uh, more exciting times you're giving money out. We're looking forward to it. Thanks right. for having me. Thank you. That's uh, Brian Johnson with the Community Foundation here. That's going to do it for the Giant FM Morning Show. Have a great Wednesday, everybody.